What's up, Canisaurs? It's Rod with POW Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Tuesday, August 13th. Hope you're well. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Organic Rams Q3 2024 earnings from today. OGI stock was up over 26% at one point. Absolutely crushed earnings today and overall a great report. We'll take a look at the chart and what to expect in terms of price action technicals in the days, weeks, months ahead. Before we get to it though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff. You'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. As always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor and you should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say right. And full disclosure, I do own Organogram in my portfolio and I just launched memberships on the channel as well. So you can click on join and uh, get member only videos, etc. Tons of different perks that you can check out. You can also follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. Handle for that is at group pal. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And just want to say a big shout out to the community. Uh, just eclipsed the 1 million view mark on the channel. So thank you very much. Love each and every one of you who have continued to show support along the way. Definitely does not go unnoticed. So Organogram reports third quarter fiscal 2024 results. They did beat analyst estimates. The forecast was 39.38 million for revenue came in at 41.06 million. EPS earnings per share was negative 0.0677. It says it came in at negative 0.07, which I'm not sure where it's pulling that from. Same thing with trading view, negative 0.07. It was actually better than that, uh, which I'll bring up here. If you go to their recent Q3 2024 earnings, uh, interim uh, consolidated statements. If we scroll down, you can see here it was 2.8 million. 2.813 million to be exact, and it was actually 0 0.027. So I'm not sure where they got that from, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, tend, I tend not to rely on TradingView or Investing.com for some of these earnings per share's revenue. They're usually pretty bang on, but yeah, it was a lot better actually. Uh, it came in at positive 0 0.07. So I'm not sure where they got that from. But we'll go through some of the highlights here. Like I said, stock was up over 26% at one point from the low of the day yesterday. It was actually up a lot more than, that yeah, was over 27%. So we'll go through the highlights here and then we'll jump into the chart. But things are looking good in the MJ space. We could even see an announcement from uh, former president as well, Trump, about what his stance is on Amendment 3 in Florida, which would ignite the sector. So we'll take a look at net revenue. Like I said, 41.1 million. It increased 25% year over year. Adjusted EBITDA was 3.5 million versus negative 2.9 million in the prior year. Established European foothold with Strategic Investment Insanity Group, a leading German MJ company. They completed their landmark clinical study on FAST, which is a nano emulsion technology showing faster onset, improved bioavailability of ingestible, ingestible products. Pro forma cash position of 173 million. Their adjusted gross margin of 14.6 million or 36% compared to 6.1%, sorry, 6.1 or 19% from the same prior year period. So great uh, gross margin. Not like some of the uh, the US operators, you know, some of them pushing truly, I think 60%, <laughs> but, uh, you know, a little bit different considering Organogram International. I'm very bullish on uh, Organogram as well. And uh, they've got a lot of uh, different uh, international uh, investments and they're looking at the US, which we'll discuss here in a minute. They held the number one position in milled flour, number one in hash, number one in pure CBD gummies, number three in edibles, number three in pre-rolls, number three in dried flour, and held the overall number three market position in Canada. Number one market share position in Atlantic Canada, number three in Ontario, and top five licensed producer in every Canadian province. Achieved 9.3% market share in Quebec in Q3 fiscal 2024, up from 8.2% in fiscal Q2 2024. Achieved net, sorry, achieved record market share in New Brunswick of 25. 8%, which is hometown, in Q3 fiscal 2024, up from 20% in Q2 fiscal 2024. So product development collaboration PDC, Organogram and British American Tobacco, BAT, continue to work together through their PDC on new work streams to develop innovative technologies in the edible, vape, and beverage categories in addition to new disruptive inhalation formats aimed at addressing the bigger consumer pain points that exist in the category today. Through their Jupiter Strategic Investment Pool, the company made its first significant European strategic investment to expand its presence in the European MJ market with 21 million investment into Sanity Group, a leading German MJ company. The company is also exploring US and additional international investment opportunities that align with Organogram's strategy to increase market share, enhance profitability, and establish itself as a global industry leader with the goal of delivering long-term shareholder value. 
international sales. The company signed two new international supply agreements in Australia and the UK. The company now has supply agreements in, with seven partners in Germany, UK, Australia, Israel, and is evaluating additional global partnership oppor opportunities. One thing I really like about OGI as well is they're 100% MJ focused. As of June 30th, 2024, the company had cash restricted and unrestricted of 89.5 million. Their SGNA sales, selling uh, general and administrative. SGNA expenses in Q3 fiscal 2024 were 14.8 million, a decrease from 19 million in Q3 fiscal 2023, representing a decrease of 22% year over year. Love to see it. The decrease was a result of lower costs associated with the implementation of the first phase of a new ERP system and reduced professional fees. So Q3 fiscal 2024 net income was 2.8 million compared to a net loss of 213.5 million in Q3 fiscal 2023. That was massive. Uh, Improvement, the reduction in net loss from the prior period is primarily attributed to higher revenues for recreational MJ revenue, as well as an impairment loss recorded in Q3 fiscal 2023. Net cash, Q3 fiscal 2024 net cash issued, sorry, used by operating activity, activities was 0 0.2 million compared to 14.8 million cash used in Q3 fiscal 2023, primarily due to higher revenues from recreational MJ and reduced costs in Q3 2024. So you can see excise taxes was 22.5 four or five million huge right that brought their gross revenue down from 63 million to 41 million so yeah they rounded it up 41.1 million and then excise taxes q3 2023 was 15.624 million uh, gross margin 36 percent net uh, income like i said 2.8 million scroll down here total assets 354 million and change liabilities 58 million and change and shareholder equity 295 million and change they had their conference call as well at 8 a.m. Eastern time this morning. I didn't actually have a chance to join it, uh, but I'll do my best to watch the replay. You can do so as well. Going to that press release, the details are there at the bottom. But if you did join the conference call, let me know what your biggest takeaway from that was. If we take a look, like I said, at the OGI chart from the low of yesterday, to the high of the day today, we were up almost 27.5% roughly and leading the charge. NOVC, Nova MJ, there was some news that SNDL was going to be uh, buying out uh, the remaining the remaining stake in that for 175 a share and we're at 172 so that's why we're up almost 35 percent but overall a great day for the mj space we did confirm a daily uptrend as well on ogi this is on the nasdaq we have our low high of the bounce higher low and higher high so daily uptrend confirmed could still see an ema 12 and 26 bull cross as well if we zoom out to the weekly time frame could be looking at a potential inverse head and shoulders we'll see where we top out but also gearing up for a weekly ema 12 and 26 bull cross so things are looking good here leading into the fall. And I mentioned that OGI was one of those names that had still yet to confirm a monthly uptrend, but we're very close to doing so now. We're starting the monthly bounce, haven't broken the high of last month. So 180 was the high of last month. We hit 183, so monthly bounce underway. Now it's all about key resistance here at 291. Break that, then it's monthly uptrend confirmed. We would have our low, high of the bounce, higher low, and then we need the higher high. So break 291, and we have a lack of resistance all the way up to 508. But yeah, we're looking really good. And this is why you want to, look at you know the monthly time frame is the most important factor because we know that until you know multiple names not just in the u.s but in canada until all the tier ones are in monthly uptrends we can't be confident that the almost four-year bear market is over and we're starting a potential multi-year bull market and what we need to see in my opinion is monthly uptrends across the sector and like i said on this big run up here from uh, you know october to the high of march we were up almost 200 percent but we the difference is this time we could potentially confirm a monthly uptrend. So we knew they'd be expecting to top out and then form a monthly higher low. And what a great opportunity it was to add on this monthly higher low at 131, looking for a higher low compared to 97 cents, right? So that was a great entry opportunity. Again, not telling you to buy, sell, or hold, but this is why patience is a virtue, right? You want to, you don't want to be chasing green candles. You want to be uh, loading on consolidation and this monthly higher low, looking for a monthly uptrend ahead of some of the biggest catalysts of our lifetime, rescheduling, uh, you know, Florida on the ballot. I think that's going to pass. Uh, Germany looking to fast track pillar two excise tax could approve here in Canada. And uh, we, like I said, they paid a lot in excise taxes. So that would be a huge improvement to their bottom line if they switched to a percentage free fee from a flat fee. And then if we take a look at the weekly time frame, we just had a bull cross of the stick, the stochastic and the MACD, and we are, are set to close above the 10 week moving average. So we want to see us close the week over 159, but it's looking really good at the moment. We're also back above the 50 weekly. We have the 200 weekly there, or sorry, the 100 weekly there at 2.18. And then after that, that's been a brick wall. After that, we have a lack until 504. So like I said, um, after confirming a monthly uptrend, if we can break key resistance there at 291, we got some runway until about five bucks. Daily time frame, 
We just had a death cross as well, so we saw some downside as a result of that. But now we're getting back above all of our daily moving averages as well. So it's looking fantastic here on the OGI chart. Uh, very bullish on this name long term. I think it's going to be in the top 10 uh, companies long term for sure. Maybe, you know, somewhere around the top five. But I would say, you know, top 10 for sure. And like I said, I really do like the fact that they're 100% MJ focused. And, uh, you know, they have that partnership with British American Tobacco. And the numbers are really starting to uh, turn turn a corner here. And we're seeing that not just from OGI, but from a lot of the Canadian operators, which we know are building uh, for, you know, international uh, growth and expansion, right? They're not just focused on a few key provinces or, you know, Canada. They're looking at, you know, Germany and Australia and Israel, all these international and then the U.S. as well, right? So, of course, that's going to eat into their, their margins, their profitability and their cash reserves, unlike some of the U.S. companies that are only focusing on a few key states, right? They haven't even gotten the whole uh, states, you know, covered let alone international. The only one that I could even say would be Cureleaf, right? Uh, they're the only ones that, you know, they have an operator here in Canada. They just acquired Northern Green Canada. They have the U.S. and they have uh, Germany and all over the U.S., uh, the U.K. and uh, all over uh, the world as well, right? So uh, there's a reason why Cureleaf is also struggling with profitability and using their cash is because, like I said, they're, they're focusing on international expansion. While you know, you want to take that slow approach, but at the end of the day, you know, these companies that weather the storm and that, that are staying solvent until the U.S. legalizes, oh man, th those are going to be the companies that reap the rewards. And I think that Organogram is going to be just fine long term. Uh, super bullish on this name. It's uh, it's in my it's one of my largest portfolio uh, MJ portfolio holdings. If you haven't seen my MJ portfolio 2024 update with percentages, you can check that out. But uh, I'm going to do another one here and probably. Uh, some point in the next couple of months for the back half of 2024. All right, let me know what you think of these earnings in the comment section below. We'll continue the conversation there. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us in the pursuit of wealth, and we'll see you again on the next video.